Hey, it's Thomas Garwick 11 with the very final episode of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Blade Buffs. This time covering Catalyst again, who I covered before, but with updated and new ideas added on this time. The last time I only had one real idea for them, so going to be adding a lot to that. And Catalyst is, of course, a major story spoiler, so if you have not finished Chapter 7, I'll have a 5 second spoiler warning. So, if you're watching, you of course know that Catalyst is Blade Nia, the best healer blade in the entire game. No one can heal as good as she does. She's got regen, which is honestly a really good effect. The problem is that she can't do anything but heal. That's it. All she can do is heal, and this is a game that does not like dedicated healing. So, usually what we do to buff blades is keep to their niche and try to make it more viable. The problem is her niche is healing, and she's already as good at it as you can possibly get. Normally we try to avoid just making a blade high DPS because all the best blades are already high DPS with some kind of big party support. So, for once, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making her big DPS and big party support because this isn't a blade that deserves to be viable. This is a blade that deserves to be broken Nia deserves to be top tier. Nia should be one of the strongest blades. For both story reasons and because it's Nia. She is cat. So we're going to start off then with arts. Since she is a unique blade and only has one set of arts on one character, we can just buff the arts themselves as a small buff for her before we get to the big buffs. The first is Waterflower should be a launch art. She doesn't have any driver combos. So Waterflower should be launch. It's very fast. The animation already fits for launch. Saber Slash also fits the animation for launch, but the problem is that only the last hit really fits for launch, I feel like. So Waterflower would be better for a launch art. And then this is only a minor thing, but it's going to play into what we are going to do for her big buffs. And that is a lesser known mechanic is that healing, direct healing at least, can critical hit. And when it does, it has an increased healing ratio, same with a regular critical hit. I believe it increases by the same amount as critical damage normally does, which I think is 20% maybe, I could be wrong on that. But on top of that, it also fills the party gauge. So we would make Redemption have a hidden critical hit guarantee. When you use Redemption, it will always be a critical heal. So it will heal higher than what the ratio actually says, if you do the calculations right. And it will also fill the party gauge a little bit. This isn't a big effect, and it seems like overkill because she's already so good at healing, but it'll make sense when we get to what the big effect is going to be for her. Now on to Blade Nia herself. Her stats are all pretty good, nothing to change there. Now we're not going to be changing anything about her specials either, because we want them to be high healing. And this will all make sense when we get to the skills. This one, we'll also be keeping this the same. This is actually a really good skill in general. And instant regen, we're going to replace this. There's just no reason to have this. This is a really bad effect. We're going to be replacing this with... 180% damage increase for the whole party. You know how Dagos has 120%? This is going to be 180%. But to balance that out, we're going to make it a slow increase instead of an automatic increase. And that is, it will increase by 1% for every 500 HP healed to the party. So this way it will just steadily increase and you don't even have to do anything because just having regen out will increase it steadily. But the more you heal, the faster you will get the increase to your damage for a cap of 180% damage increase to the whole party. Honestly, we could go even higher because we're trying to make her broken. We could honestly go up to 200%, but I feel like 180% is enough. Since Dagos is already really good at 120. So 180% damage increase for the whole party. Steadily increase by 1% for every 500 HP healed. And Redemption alone, you could heal like 10,000 
HP to each party member at once just using redemption. So it'd be pretty quick to max this out. You'd maybe need like 30 seconds into the battle to actually max it out, which isn't too bad. And this one, we would be keeping this, but actually it doesn't really matter which skill we add this to because we're just going to be adding an effect. Honestly, we could even make this a hidden effect that doesn't need to be on the skill chart because a lot of these skills kind of fill the screen already. But really, it could just go onto any skill, and that is give her a unique overheal effect where she can heal above the character's max HP up to 9,000. 999 HP cap. If the character does not already have their HP capped, then Nia can heal above the cap. Well, Nia can he heal up to the total cap. She can heal above their normal HP cap and up to the total cap of 9,999 HP. This way, you could get healing increases for her damage skill without even having to heal anyone. No one has to take any damage to get the damage boost from healing. And honestly, this is an effect that it's kind of weird that it hasn't come up in Xenoblade at all. It's fairly common in JRPGs where you can have an overheal effect, where you can heal above your max HP. So I feel like it would be a good unique effect story-wise for her because she's so powerful at healing that she could heal you before you even get hurt. Just have you being healed as you're getting hurt before you even take the damage. That's where you just have higher HP to take damage with. And that's, I feel like those things together should be enough to make Nia broken. Not just good, but broken. A top tier blade, not quite as on par with Poppy Cutie Pie, because no one should be as powerful as Poppy Cutie Pie. But at least up there with the likes of Shulk or Elma, at least. Just be a much better version of Dagas, who could also be the healer for your whole party, so that you don't need to use crit healing. If you're running her for the damage, you don't need to run crit healing on anyone, and you can just run even more damage. So I feel like all those things together with the kind of builds that you could use around her besides just her on her own increasing the whole party's damage including her own but we also open up a lot of new opportunities since you would have healing covered by a single party member and you wouldn't need to dedicate healing slots you wouldn't need to dedicate slots to healing items so you could just dedicate more to even more damage so that will be it for this series i have covered every blade that isn't already top tier I have covered some blades multiple times to give update ideas for fixing them. And Xenoblade 2, I mean Xenoblade 3 is coming out in just a few weeks now. Hopefully there will be no need for any kind of theorized buffs for Xenoblade 3. Hopefully it'll be balanced enough that I won't need to think of anything and I won't need to make any of these videos. Of course, it would be cool if I still could make these kind of videos for Xenoblade 3. I'm just hoping I don't have to. Even though it's, I mean, it's content. I should want to be able to make more content, but hopefully the game will be so good I won't need to make any content on it. That kind of content, at least. I'm going to find plenty of things to make content about Xenoblade 3 about. Just hoping I won't need to make any me meta type of things like this. With theorizing ways to make it better. Anyway, rambling about Xenoblade 3 for a while now. If you've watched the end, then comment Blossom Dance down below. And see you next time. I've also got some Xenoblade 2 videos left before Xenoblade 3 comes out. But they're just not about actual gameplay. They're just about opinion stuff. So stay tuned for that in the next two weeks. So see you next time.